here on in, by the way, no more kicked extra points. You must go for two if you score the touchdown. Yeah, you can try a field goal if you have to, but you must try for two. There's that last. Thank you, Kelly, for checking that off. So we have already reached that point. And we've already seen Texas Tech's willingness to go for two, so they obviously have some plays in reserve, and every team does. If we're in this situation, what's our best call when we need a two-point conversion? Both TCU teams has that. elected to play at this end of the field. Okay, they can do that. Neither team has ever gone this far in their histories in overtime. Three overtimes. When you get to this point where you're playing so much ball, you talk about attrition, both mentally and physically. Can the guys hold up and can they carry out their assignments they, the way they were in the first four quarters? I think Coach Patterson might get hydrated himself. He's going to have to. All right, his team has the ball. One more time with Boykin. Tucker in motion. Now he pulls up. And back to Tucker they go, and he is smothered for no gain. Now, we've had great play on first downs in this overtime, except that one right there is the first time that a first down play on the first play of the overtime period didn't work. Jackson Richards on the stop. Well, that's a great point because when you aren't su successful on first down in this situation, all of the pressure transfers to a young redshirt freshman quarterback trying to get it done in a big, big moment. You do have a great kicker who's made five field goals, but do you really want to settle an overtime game with a field goal? Boykin. And good job there by the Tech defense. That's a gain of about three. Catch made by Josh Boyce. Now you got third down, and they're going to call it. They're going to give him four yards, third and six. And you're back to how do we teach the redshirt freshman quarterback in this moment who's hobbled himself and it's about decision making down here at worst we kick a field goal if it's there make a play if it's not put it on the fellow freshman kicker different formation this time Kelly they have an empty backfield two receivers to the short side of the field three to the left of the QB guns it Rock was jumped by Cody Davis who almost intercepted it and here he comes, Jaden Overcrome. And the out receiver running the out route right there, and the throw was just simply late. That was Tucker from the slot position. It was the right guy. It just needed to come out about a second and a half earlier. Overcrome hasn't missed a kick today. From 38. This guy is as cool as that cryogenic sauna they have here, which stands as a modern hot tub or cold tub, I should say. He is just perfect. He is unshakable. Six field goals today for Overchrome. A while back, when we started this game, we mentioned the significance there is of this game. At stake, right? yes. yes, in the Big 12, you bet. The winner of this game is going to be three and one of the Big 12. There they are, right below Kansas State. They're a little busy tonight, too, by the way. The loser is going to drop the two and two in the conference and most likely realistically you're not going to win the conference with two losses this year in the Big 12. Additionally both teams have some tough games left. They may end up be fighting for bowl eligibility. So there's a lot at stake for a mid to late October game. Now Texas Tech a touchdown will win it. They go underneath and it's broken up. Darren Moore. Unable to hang on. Jason Verrett knocked it loose. John Coots, number 97, the defensive end actually dropped back into coverage in kind of a zone blitz look and created more traffic inside for that crossing route. Will it come down to the foot of Ryan Buston? Eight out of 11 in field goal attempts this year. Moore, he is a physical receiver. His hands seem like they're always on the defender. Makes that catch inside the 10 to the 8. And the back shoulder fade that is so difficult to defend. Jason Barrett, number two, has great man-to-man -man coverage all the way outside, but throw behind on that back number, and Moore is a physical guy that can just basically box out and get the football. Well, he's got 
three cracks to win the game before you try the field goal. Deggie. Two cracks to win the game before you try the field goal. Knocked down by Devontae Fields. And remember, Deggie is only 6'1", at least it says in the program. Wink, wink, wink. And I think if you can't, if you're too tired to get pressure on this quarterback here, get push and hold your hands up and form a picket fence on the end zone line and make it difficult for him to find a window to th throw in and throw through. They bring pressure from the edge. Deggie to the end zone. And it is caught. Touchdown. Texas Tech has won it. See the step forward is all the room that's needed for quarterback to find receiver. We've seen this three times, and all three times it's ended up in the end zone. And well, you remember what you what said, a big play, several hours ago when we started. Where's Alex Torres been today? He had that big game against Oklahoma last year. Well, he ends up coming up big, getting the winning touchdown here. Well, he not only didn't get a touch until the deep in the fourth quarter, he didn't even get looked at until deep in the fourth quarter. But there's something between the quarterback, Daigie, and, and Torres that they hook up when it's it's go time. What a spectacular football game this was in three overtimes. Torres with two touchdowns. You had Overcrome with a school record of six field goals in the game. And for TCU, a bitter loss. And they have a evil crunch of their schedule coming up next against some of the best teams in the country while well, Texas Tech gets their sixth win and goes to three and one in the Big 12. We thank you for joining us. It was a spectacular day in Fort Worth. Now let's throw it from Fort Worth to our studio. Good night.